Hello, it's Flex and you're watching Build Series Sydney. Today I'm joined by one of the most exciting Aussie names in Hollywood right now, Adam Demos. But before we meet him, let's check out a trailer from his brand new film. It's on Netflix and it's called Falling in Love. What can we get you? Directions to Belbert Valley Farm. I'm the new owner. Oh. In from America, right? I bet there's an intriguing backstory to your arrival. Well, after losing my job and my boyfriend in San Francisco, I entered a win and in contest. You won an in, located in New Zealand. So, a 13 hour flight to Auckland and three bus rides later. Ah! I'm so sorry. I will pay for any of the damages. Well, this did put a big dent in my vehicle. Haha. -ha. I'm officially the owner of an inn. Never assume anything on the internet matches his profile picture. You look like you've seen a ghost. Goat. Gilbert. He's a wily fella. Do you know anybody in town that does renovations? Jake Taylor. Can I have his phone number? Jake, what's your phone number? Who's asking? She is. No, I didn't. Why do you want my number? I was hoping to talk to you about a proposition. She's a real beauty. I can help you restore her to original glory. Brilliant. You see, broken. What's with you in the old houses? Oh, we'll always took to building. Makes me feel a little less. A little less broken. Look at I believe Beachwood Dell's most eligible bachelor might be keen on you. She's a beaut. She sure is. No, we don't care. Hey, Chad. Diaz, guess what? I got a brand new job for you. I do have my real life to get back to. Oh, your real life. Seems to me you haven't told her how you actually feel. I'm guessing the universe has its own plans for things, eh? I'd like to imagine a fairy tale ending. I thought we were friends, mate. Adam, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. My absolute pleasure. How many times do you think you've seen that trailer now? I mean, myself, I probably watched it about two or three times, but now that I'm back home in Wollongong visiting my mum, it's on constant repeat. Meet and greets. Come watch the trailer. <laughs> yeah, it's so rude. <laughs> Does it feel like an out of body experience? You're like, when did I say that? Did I act that part? How'd that feel like? Yeah, it feel, it's it's strange, but it's also awesome because it was such a fun time to shoot it. So it's like it brings back good memories. But yeah, it is. I mean, it's never going to feel super comfortable just watching yourself on screen. It's weird. And watching us watch you on screen while you're here as well. Like yeah, yeah, back yeah. And forth. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's all <laughs> sorts of inception going on there. I have to ask, mm -hmm. Christina Milian, yep. an icon in all ways possible. How is she to work with? What's she like? She's horrible. No, no, no. She's um, she's one of the nicest, most refreshing people that I've met in the industry. The crazy thing about it is she's been successful for like, I don't even know, 20 Ages. plus years. But every single day she would turn up with more enthusiasm than I'd seen out of anybody on set before. Wow. And so to, it's really inspiring. Someone who's been around for that long, it is just so pumped to be there and so grateful to be employed. So that's, <laughs> that, you, you know, it's, a, yeah. it's a, tough, a tough game and it's not really, you know, not for her because she's been doing it for so long. She's got such an established name, but she's still so enthusiastic. It's really cool. It's nice to hear as well, because I guess when you see someone on the big screen, you assume that this is just their life. You must be working all the time. But yeah. no, it is difficult. Yeah. It's a one in a million opportunity. Yeah, so you just got to savour every single moment. I mean, when I'm on there, I ask them, can you schedule me on the start of the day and the end, even if I don't have any scenes in the middle, just because you want to be around that energy as much as you can, because it's you're very fortunate to get a, get a job. Absolutely. I realised I should have said one in a million, but now the pun's gone, uh, so I'm going okay. to pick it back up later. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll do some post-production. We'll <laughs> now, you two seem like you get along quite well. I mean, yep. your characters initially didn't quite. Was your chemistry, like, inherent? Are you good friends? Yeah, we're mates. I mean, she's just... Uh, I'm pretty easygoing, and so is she. And you're also shooting in another country that we're both not from. And so... And, you know, the director and producer and everyone. And so it almost felt like we are away on camp, you know. And so everyone bonded super quickly about that. But it's such a fun, light-hearted story too. So it's just everyone was just having a good time. But we are good mates now. She's so cool. Sick. And what was your vibe when you got the script? Were you picturing yourself to be a rom-com guy? 
No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I just think I just like the character. That's it. I like the character and and the director too, Roger Cumbell, who did Cruel Intentions and Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds and stuff. It's like it, that was a really cool opportunity to work with someone like that and learn. And and yeah, and we've Christina and I have got a mutual friend, and she said she's awesome. So there was that as well. So yeah, it was just everything. We love a good reference check. Yeah. So what did you like about Jake, your character? Did you see any similarities between you two? Um, I, you know, I mean, I'm not really Daniel Day Lewis in it right now. No, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. No, I just like that. You know, he was he's a good, genuine guy, but also enjoy. Like I appreciated the fact that because of his heartbreak and that's why he didn't want to leave the town there was those memories that were keeping him sort of held there and stuck in a routine and I think that was the appeal that he found in Gabriella that she sort of got him to break out of that a little bit and and challenge him so that's what I really enjoyed about it I like that as well was that your first time in New Zealand surely not right it was my first time it was how embarrassing yeah Uh, it's three (laughs) hours away it's ridiculous but never made it it, it's as soon as we wrapped I met my best mate in Queenstown and we spent a week there and that's the most insane place ever and and we went back three months ago to go snowboarding or two months ago so mm. it's like you know i've been there three times this year now that's how incredible it you're is. local yeah locals only even though they <laughs> give you a hard time about the rugby and whatnot it's no, still worth it it's part of it mm-hmm. how long did it take to film the whole project like top to bottom oh, i think i spent six weeks there what? six weeks for a whole they shoot movie. those yeah yeah they shoot those things super quick i mean the the uh the house that we were renovating, so we would sh- we shot that in chronological order. So it's like we would get there, and it was all broken down and stuff like that. We would go home, and then the prop, the props, and the crew and everyone and set deck would then do it up no. for the next day and the next day. And so after a week and a half, we had a brand new house. They were they were after working so the- so hard. I thought you said we as in like you were on the tools as well. Absolutely and I was like, not. Oh. <laughs> No, no, no. Everyone asked, like, you know, everyone said because I used to do construction when I was younger, but I was just a labourer. I don't... So you were just breaking things. That's all like I was doing. Just, restoring. just swinging a hammer. That's, as, that's as, uh, as clever as I could get. I mean, but I like the synergy, though. It kind of makes sense. It's Once cool. a labourer, now a restoration guy on a rom-com. It's cool. There, there is, the, there is that, the moment of, you know, I started... I was doing construction. I used to think... I'd love to try acting. I'd love to give it a go and stuff like that. And you cut to all these years later and I'm on set acting, pretending to do construction. And it's just this weird moment you go, wow. It's quite serendipitous. Yeah, it's really cool. So in that moment you mentioned, yeah, you were working on a construction site and wanted to try acting. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you'd wanted to do from when you were like younger? Or was it like a, oh, that could be a viable career path? No, I just thought, I mean, I'm from Wollongong and it was uh, – not the smallest town, but a smaller <laughs> town. It was never really offered to us in the sense that we're sort of a construction rugby league town. And, and, and so I went into that way of life, but I always thought acting would be cool. But, and so I used to, but I used to work construction. I didn't love it that much. I appreciate it, but I didn't love it. And I think I was about 23 one day and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, I just need to bite the bullet. Cause the moment you step in front of the camera, you either like acting or you just like movies. And so I Which did. Which one were you? You know, uh, here I am. I like I liked acting, <laughs> You're like, I right? Just like movies. Yeah, but it was it was. I didn't do drama at school. Oh. I didn't do anything like that. So I was working in the steelworks in Wollongong, and I remember calling my mum and just going, "Can you?" Because I lived in a farm, and so we didn't have internet. Right. And so I had to call my mum at work and say, "Can you Google acting classes?" And the first one that came up, I just went up every Saturday, and told my mates I was working overtime, and that was it. It's like a Cinderella story. It's, it's super weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were so confused, but loved it. So, do you remember the first thing you auditioned for? What was it like? Were you were you good from the get go? Was this your calling? No, nah, I mean you're a nervous wreck, so yeah. probably not. But it was probably uh, I don't know commercial or something like that. When you're going for an audition and you're pretending to eat a burger or something nice. ridiculous that no one's ever going to be good at. Any techniques? No techniques whatsoever. <laughs> you hold now, just know you are. Yeah, that's yeah. The, <laughs> that's an award-winning performance. No, that's super sick. So you knew you didn't know you wanted to be an actor, but then you auditioned. You found I'll, a few roles. Yeah, I, I just thought I, I thought it would be something that would be cool and that I might like, but it took me until I was 23 to really bite the bullet and see if I wanted to try it. And now you're here. Yeah. I want to talk more about your transition from, because obviously you on Unreal, which mm-hmm. is 
uh, it's hard to explain, but a TV series about a fictional reality TV series. Yeah. I got that. You should try being on it. It's <laughs> even weirder than that. It's, it's out of control. Wrapping my head around it as well. But going from that, of a TV series to a feature film, yep. what were the differences or considerations that you didn't realise at the time? Uh I mean, Unreal is just its own beast to mm. begin with. So it's like every TV and film, it's all si- it's all similar. The good thing about a film, I guess, you've got the beginning, middle and end. And so you sort of, even though sometimes you do shoot out a sequence, you sort of know, you figure out where you're going, whereas TV you can go, see, you know, season to season. But, um, I mean, doing Unreal is like nothing else. And I was told that the moment I got there too. I remember meeting the director and he said, you're not going to understand what's about to happen, so just go with it and... It'll all work out. It sounds very scary. It, it was so scary. <laughs> I just signed you, up you to see, act. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you, it was my first job overseas too and I was in a new country and I was super excited but then you're shooting Unreal and then you, they call – then you've – I mean, do you want me to go into the, how, how weird this was? So my – so it's called Everlasting is the Bachelor world and then there's Unreal. So I remember my first scene was the arrival scene where all the contestants arrive, fake contestants – and you turn up and we're in the black SUV and they call action. And then there's all the fake crew running around and the fake AD and the host getting ready and arguing. And then they, the fake AD, please stay with me, calls action and the yeah. boom crane comes down. And the host is like, tonight, I never last him. Yeah. And then, so you're in that world. And then they go, Q August, which is my character. Yeah. And I walk out and I'm like, he's aware that there's a camera that this is exactly what it would be like to be yeah. on a reality show. And so then you're doing that and then they cut and then everyone starts arguing but you're still in you're still oh okay in the show and then they cut that so what's and your, so I'm asking what's your cue to I'm cut? asking <laughs> extras where the bathrooms are and also cuz they were dressed as crew I didn't know who anybody was for ages <laughs> it was so confusing it sounds so meta cuz yep. they're like cut but like not you keep but we're going. not cut yeah and so, and it's also who do you want to be within unreal and then the show it's just it's bizarre, but it was the most fun ever because you just it's just a wild ride. You just strap in and go for it. But it was it was confusing for a long time. When I got to come back for season four, obviously I understood the show and watching all the new people there, watching them sort of freak out a little bit like I was. It was interesting. Gave them the same speech. Yeah. It's gonna be unreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can never say that word again. Yeah, and it would be that way. <laughs> um, what were some of the most memorable experiences from that time, though? Of from the show, from being on the show, from being in the show, but in the show, in the show. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, the arrival scene was probably the one where I'm like, "This is bizarre." And then you, and then all of a sudden, because I hadn't heard of the show, and then when I got the audition, I'm like, "I should watch an episode to get the tone of it." And then as the audition started to continue and getting a test deal and stuff I've finished the two seasons mm. and I went oh no now I need to get this because I love it so much and all of a sudden three weeks later I'm standing opposite Quinn doing a scene the little pocket rocket Quinn's and it's like how is this ha-? that was a moment where and you know all of my mates and I grew up watching Entourage and there's <laughs> there's Dana Gordon and Quinn and you're doing the scene with her it's like this is pretty cool kind of helps that you were playing an Australian though because I imagine like the meta concept of being in a show and a show and then having an accent as well yeah. would have been too much to handle yeah well actually I, I was American all the way up until I got the job mm. but then there was a, a Russian guy an English guy and they just said why don't we just try it with your own accent and see how it works because we'll do sort of an international style thing. And so it was, yeah, it made it easier for me. How is your American accent? I mean, I probably won't do it now to it in case, in, <laughs> ca- like... in, in case it's rubbish, but I will say it's unbelievable. Unbelievably Unbel- good. Good, yes, that's the one. <laughs> okay. You'll never know. Oh, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that for size later. Okay. Mine's terrible. Okay. So if you were to do yours, you just – I don't need There any would be no competition. You? Okay. But – but we'll save that one for later. Right, done. So, are there any key differences or similarities between working in Australia versus working in the US? Um, no, not really. Everyone's pretty chilled here, though. Yeah. It, I did notice that in New Zealand as well. The, everyone's the same as Australia. Everyone's super relaxed, but also professional at the same time. Like, you don't need to be stressed in order to, to do a good job. But, no, the crew that I worked with on Unreal, they, I mean... It was just a lot – the budget was so much bigger that it felt more of a machine, you know, right. whereas working uh, on smaller budget stuff 
everyone seems to be sort of like a family in a way. Mm. But yeah, no, every, I mean, just the budget, I guess. It's almost good to know though, because I can imagine a lot of local talent would be like, oh, America would be a huge beast. I'm going to have to learn a new way of being, a new way of engaging. And it's just like, nah. No, when you see, yeah, it's funny. I mean, you can have all the crew and the boom cranes and everything around you, but ultimately you're just speaking to someone and you don't really see that everything, like you're aware of it, but it's the same. You could be shooting a smaller TV show or film or have an, a massive set, but if you're just talking to somebody, you don't notice it. You notice it when you're walking up yeah. to block the scene, but you don't notice it as much. So it's not really as scary as what you'd assume it would be. Yeah. Were you aware of like the intricacies of reality TV dating shows before you had been on Unreal? No. No way. I had no idea that everyone was being produced to that extent. Being on the show and being produced as the character, did you find it difficult? I mean, not difficult, but how did you find it relating to those characters and knowing that there are real people in the real world that are being produced the way your character was? I mean, it's frightening. I think Unreal sort of blew the lid off it a little bit, but especially season one because our creator used to produce The Bachelor for six years. And so... A lot of the stuff that you see on the show has actually happened to people, which is, it's, yeah, I can't even go into it. It's frightening. But now I think everybody, you know, shows like Unreal Exist, we've heard all these horror stories. So now everybody knows sort of what they're getting themselves into, I would assume. But I don't know. It'd be so tricky though, because I guess like when you're watching from, from, when you're watching from home, sorry, it's so easy to say like, I'd never do that. Like how are people crying on the TV show? How are they doing this? But there's so much we don't see. And I guess it's edited in a way that would, you know, make it look like people are unhinged and insane when they're just like not. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, you can have a shot of someone yawning and then you cut that in with seven days earlier, someone telling a story and then all of a sudden they're this rude person at the table. It's it's all a lot out of your hands, but I mean, I guess that's what you sign up for when you go onto that show. But it still is kind of horrible if you're getting betrayed in a bad way. Yeah, I feel for those people. I feel for them too. It's almost like acknowledging that in some ways it's an art form mm. to create TV that dramatic, yeah. but also we're dealing with real people and real lives. Yeah, and then once the show's over, then they still have to go about their lives. It's yeah. I don't know. It's a lot. Knowing what you know and knowing how hectic it can be, but also knowing that you're going to ask me if I would ever go on it. No, 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 no. But you've got like the cheat sheet. You can get in and be like, okay, I know they're going to want this kind of guy. No. Not even a little bit. No chance. Yeah, because there are people, these producers are probably pretty good, man. Doesn't matter if you know all of the, uh, the secrets. And also, it's emotions are heightened when the cameras are on you and yeah. you have problem. You know, you maybe you're feeling for because I did meet a guy who won the Bachelorette in America, and he's still with the girl now. So like, you, you're you're emotional. You're starting to fall for someone, and then the cameras are on you, and maybe you haven't slept that much. It's like I probably wouldn't do that. Yeah. But also, I just like acting. I don't want to <laughs> be. You know, you can act on the show. It's not actors on the show. No, I fake acted on one of those <laughs> things. That's enough for me. That is, and it's more than most would do. So you have the inside scoop. Yeah. What was it like working with Constance and Cherie? First of all, being in that love triangle, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of energies, a lot. but also acting with them. It's just a masterclass. They're so good, and you just have to sit back and take it all in and learn and be thankful that you're there and prepare your ass off. I guess you know you're going up against two weapons, but they couldn't be nicer either. So that's what's really cool as well. It's like. They're the leads of the show and it really does, it shows, movies or whatever, it filters down from the top and and that sets the tone for everything. And when they're carrying themselves so well and being super friendly and helpful to everyone and super professional, that's, you know, that's all you can ask for. So, you know, you just, I learned a lot. And I made good friends out of it too. Constance is now one of my, you know, dearest friends. Get out. Yeah, she's awesome, man. She's everything. She's everything that people want her to be and more, you know. Like she's, she plays Quinn and Quinn's super scary and strong. Constance Powerful. is strong, but the furthest thing from scary. One of the kindest, most generous people mm. that I'll ever meet. That's so a good awesome. review, like yeah, a Yelp she's... review for people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I'm definitely not the only one who says that about her. That's 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 around the board. Yeah. That's sick. Well, I'm not the only one with questions for you. We've got okay. a ton in the Q and A. First of all, I like this one from Nicola. 
It's what is Gilbert the goat like in real life? <laughs> Let <laughs> me tell you, when I was Googling goat, this. I've never hated a goat so much. It gets more press than Christina and, and I put together. It's I'm out telling of you, the YouTube it's comments are of... all about Gilbert. No, <laughs> no, I actually, I never had the honour of doing a scene with Gilbert. But what I hear is super professional goat. Sure, you met him, right? Nope. I do what a actually. Diva. I, I saw, I saw <laughs> Gilbert the diva. I saw Gil, Gil, yeah, Gilbert would only hang in his trailer until he was ready. But I, I would, um, I was doing a scene, and then we cut, and we we're about to go again, and I saw the handler walking the goat past, and I was thinking, what the hell are we doing here right now? Is a goat just rolling through the house? That we're filming in. But no, I, I didn't get to do a scene, but everyone loves Gilbert. Was everyone. Gilbert the only goat or did Gilbert have a, a body two. double? <gasps> Gilbert one and two. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. He was two on it to be one goat. Yeah. Both talented. <laughs> Both very talented. We need to meet him. Yeah. All right. Um, Shah says, now you've done TV and film, what would be your dream role? It's not, I mean, either. It's just, a, for me really, and it seems like such a simple boring answer but it's just if i can relate to the character and i can do it justice and that's all i care about whether it be film tv theater anything it's like i don't always say at the very least i'll give whoever employed me a return on their investment but i'm sure i'll always give more but that's i but i have to know that i can do that and so it's you know if my instincts relate to the character and stuff like that whatever genre who cares you know as long as you like who you're playing or you can find a way into it are there any dream characters? Like if I had to write and pitch you a role, that would be perfect. Mm, no, no. I mean, until I see it. We're about to see you in a lot of things. Yeah. You'll be playing a scientist next, okay. an astronomer, Done. Yeah. a chef. I'll do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it all. Or, or I'll just play a tradie forever. But whatever keeps I mean, what, it, whatever it's keeps working. me employed. It's working so well. Yep. <laughs> all right, sick. Um, ooh, okay. Jen says, are there any actors' careers you aspire to be like? Um, not to be like, I mean, there are actors that you love in general, like Denzel Washington and Matt Damon and all those guys, right? But no, not to be like, you just got to find your own thing. I think it's a different world too that we live in now with streaming and there's so much stuff going on. So as long as you can keep working on good stuff and good people, and I've been lucky enough working on, um, Unreal with a caliber of people there and then going to this film and... You just want to keep learning and working with cool people. Absolutely. Who you admire. That's sick. Yeah. Um, Kev says, oh, <laughs> what's your favourite burger from Chico's in Wollongong? This is like a locals only question. <laughs> just the- <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fish. It's like a chicken chop. That's it. I mean, everyone. So just confused. the standard OG. Just the standard with cheese on there. Yep. Nice and hungover. Ex- <laughs> large chips, extra chicken salt. Get any sauce with the chips? Nope. What They're drink? too good. Chico's chips oh. are the best. <laughs> what drink are you getting? I just I don't know I can't remember I haven't had Chico's for a while. But Damn! Yeah. Are you eating in taking away? We used to eat there. Yeah, hungover too, mm. and it's right near the beach, so you go for a swim. There and you then go. Yeah, I'm getting a visual. Never yeah. been to Chico's, but I'm sure there's like a very like chicken shop vibe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that it's I'm th- getting. It's a thing. Can't <laughs> believe that question came up, but well played. Look, I wish it was from me. Yeah. Um, ooh, okay. Matt says, did you do a chemistry read with Constance or Cherie before landing the role? And if yes, what was that like? No, I didn't. No. We, um, I just, it would, acting can be crazy. It can be such a, it can be such a slog, right? Or, or things just work out easily. Like you got to, you would do all this time and then all of a sudden things fall into place. All I did, I just did a self-tape at my mate's house in Redfern when I was working on a show here called Janet King. And in between that, I just I just did a tape, sent it off, did another tape, and I never had a Skype call back with them. I had a meeting with the director and producer on Skype, but I never had to do it with them. Whoa. But I don't know if my character was going to go down that path so much. I think once, you know, they sort of write as you go on a little bit. So I don't know if it was as going to be as heavy as what it turned out to be, but... Yeah, I never did that. Mm. And to add to that question, I wanted to know, are there any things that they make you do with fellow actors to build chemistry? Um, not that I've experienced, no. Interesting. Um, chemistry is a weird thing. Uh, you hear th- you hear that a lot, but if you're just acting like you like each other, that should be enough, really. <laughs> I've been like, you know what I mean? Uh, if the two people are doing their job, but uh, luckily enough, I've had good friendships with people I've worked with, so it's easy. So yeah. maybe I don't know yet. Maybe I'll... I'll 
have to find out that chemistry Let thing if it know. doesn't work one day. I'm hoping it's one of those like fall back into the person's arm, tell them one secret, tell yeah. them your biggest fear, that, yeah, that's go out a, on three days. That's how you that's how you build chemistry. <laughs> you must. <laughs> Unless uh, they've got a partner already, then it's super awkward. But even so, yeah, crazy things have happened. I guess so. Got <laughs> so spooky really quickly. We're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm about to quit acting. Or <laughs> I'm like, these are all just conspiracies, allegedly. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So Connor says, I'm dying to know, was falling in love sponsored by New Zealand Tourism? It seemed like the most perfect form of organic advertising. No, it wasn't sponsored at all. But you can you can see why so many films shoot there. It's it's stunning. It actually, sometimes it looks like it's green screen. It, it, it's insane. It's gorgeous. So no, it wasn't sponsored, but... Luckily enough for me, we ended up shooting there. It was so it's you now now I understand why everyone goes there. And you know, you've got the Lord of the Rings and all that sort of stuff. It's like you you can't fake that. It's too beautiful. It's been a game changer for ages. Yeah. We just haven't noticed. Yeah. We've got two more questions. Uh-huh. One from me, Hit one me. from somebody else. My question is yep. in the film, mm-hmm. you say munted. Was mm-hmm. that an ad lib or is that scripted? No, that was scripted, yeah. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a Kiwi thing. Uh, is I, it really? I, yeah, well, I don't say munted. I say hammered, I guess. Oh, I thought hammered was very American. Is it? Or yeah. blind? Or oh, blind. I don't know. We've blind. got audience. Yeah, yeah <laughs> lip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few, but I've never said munted before, no. Wow. I was like, surely this is an ad lib. No. Sprinkling something in. Sprinkling something wow. in. Wow. Okay. No, there were a few. There, were, there, was, there was a bunch of ad libs in there, but that wasn't one of them. What were the ad libs? Can you spill? Um. Oh, one point when I said the say there are sharks in mm-hmm. the thing, like there are just the, you like that one was he, mine. The director, <laughs> the, the director would just let us go. Oh, sick! Because we became because Christina and I had a good rapport and we became mates. You can sort of just riff off and see what happens. And you go too far, and they tell you to stop carrying pull it back. on. Yeah, pull it back. Yeah. Was the accent easy for you, the Kiwi accent? Well, I mean, I didn't. It didn't do a strong Kiwi mm. accent, but it's sort of. I mean, yeah, I didn't want to go too hard yeah. in, in there just because it's playing everywhere all over the world. So it's sort of – they were like just – Sprinkle maybe it. Maybe sprinkle it, but yeah, that that's enough. Like a Kiwi who's lived in Australia for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, nice. yeah, that <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah. Basically. All right. And the last question is, what is next for you? That's a good question. Uh, off the back of – this and now there's talks of you know ideas and stuff like that and blah 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 but it sounds like what actors say when they don't have a job but this is the <laughs> first time i've said it where it's actually true but Sick. but at nothing confirmed right now i remember working um on janet king with Susie porter and she said i never celebrate until i have my first lunch on set and so i've ad- you know adopted that mentality which is cool because you don't really get ahead of yourself that's smart. And so as of now, there's some cool things possibly happening, but we will see. In the pipeline. In the pipeline. Two ends as well. I like what you did there. <laughs> In the pipeline. I'm good. I'm wordy today. I'm a wordsmith. Well, well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your time with us. I really thank appreciate you. it. Everyone give it up for Adam, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And make sure you check thank out you. Falling in Love. <laughs>